perfect. So uh, I, we just wanted to start off with, you know, while watching your TED talk, you made a really profound statement that said, if we take care of the soil, soil will take care of us. Um, could you elaborate a little more on what you mean by this, just in simple terms, like something like any one of us, the common men could understand? I'll do my best. <clears throat> soil is a, a living material. Uh, multiple people have, have told others, including this group, of the number of organisms, the mass of living creatures that exist in that, that level of soil. As, living, as a living creature or a, a living entity, the soil can be damaged. And damaging the soil is much more important than just damaging that individual entity, the soil itself. That soil is what we rely on for, for food production, for water filtration. The soil is actually the largest filtration system in the world, water filtration system. So continued degradation of that soil not only degrades that soil itself as it sets in place, uh, processes like soil erosion move soil material. And the soil material is incredibly important when it's in its current spot. But once it's eroded and gets into waterways, uh, plugs filtration systems for drinking water, the nutrients and pesticides that are on the soil, um, it, it creates really important off-site. Uh, sit, uh, offsite problems. So when we say if we take care of the soil, that means that we treat that soil in a way that the living entities can survive and thrive. Because if they are thriving and surviving, that means that the crops that we also plant in that soil, which are also alive, have an environment in which those crops can also live and survive and thrive. And thriving crops are what we need to produce the food and feed required to keep this civilization healthy and, and sustained. Now, I wanted to ask you, is there a connection between soil health and some of the other global problems also that we're seeing, like climate change? And um, could you talk to us about what other global issues the soil can be very centric to? Yeah, soil has a lot of indirect impacts uh, for various components across the globe. Um, let's talk about fuel. You know, we're talking just about food, but in the EU, in, in Europe, in the US, soils have been used to produce products that aren't used for food, but used for fuel. We'll go back to the, the um, price of materials and materials of products that the soils produce. And it's dominantly food, feed, uh, fiber, those prices increase, we tend to farm harder, as I previously, previously mentioned. What does farm harder mean? It means that we may till more. Uh, we're going to till and farm areas that shouldn't be farmed, that are more erosive. We may be willing to cut corners because it's important to a farmer that thinks they have to have money. And I'm making farmers sound bad, and, and that's not the case. If you remove grass waterways, you remove conservation practices because I can make more money on the short term. What does that do to the living elements inside the soil? If soil is moving from erosion, it degrades soil health. As that element of soil health decreases, the amount of soil organic matter, let's say, in the soil, as that decreases, and that organic matter is the energy source for the microbes and living critters in that soil. So as we reduce that energy supply, we reduce the capacity of that soil to, to, to support the living components. And that's the microbes, the bigger little critters that live in the soil, worms, and, and the crop roots. One of the critical components, one of the, the key components if, uh, if we're going to save soil, let's say, and, and, and let's make it happen, is to keep the surface covered. If the soil surface is covered, it's protected against direct sunlight, which can overheat soil, reduces soil health. It reduces the energy from falling rainstorms that erode soil. 
The cover typically is organic material, which supplies energy for the microbes that are living in the soil. Cover crops, perennial crops are really good things, but what do we focus on in too many areas around the globe? It's annual crop production in which we till to remove what was there and plant again in this window of vulnerability, especially in the face of climate change, makes issues even more vulnerable. And usually when anybody thinks of like the kind of food insecurity that we're talking about or water shortage, we immediately associate it with countries like Africa and Asia and not this part of the world. And I know that you mentioned about the Corn Belt as well. But how do we make people here understand the significance of it? And what does it mean? You know, could you elaborate on what it means for the United States? But unfortunately, for the United States, it typically means more money for farmers because prices are going to go up. Uh, as, you, uh, as, as you made that statement, you started out, how do we make people understand? Unfortunately, main way that people understand is if they suffer first, then they remember. People, the, the memory that people have is really pretty short unless the pain that they feel extends for a long period of time. We've seen that many times, just too many times. Uh, and, and there's another social dynamic, and we get, I'm getting away from your question just a little bit. You know, we mentioned about water stress and food stress. The next question becomes, how do we respond socially to those stresses? And how will those social reactions impact civilization and impact cultures? We saw in 2012, exports were ceased in certain countries. I think Russia for a time period, a relatively short time period, but they stopped exporting wheat because they were trying to secure their own food security. Uh, as I mentioned, I think India stopped exporting onions. And then there were others. I mean, people get very protective when they fear. And food insecurity is really a fear driver. So you now back to your question, how do we how do we communicate this? How do we, you know, I don't know. I, I, I wish I knew. I mean, the, the, the Save the Soil movement is a, a, a really important movement. Uh, if, 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 if it's successful, it will be one of the most important movements that we've seen ever. The potential impact globally of what you're doing is, is really, really high. And I don't want to say unfortunately, but had people, more people experienced hunger, they would see this as a, <clears throat> excuse me, as a more important item on their radar than they do now. In the world of concern about soils, there are a few, like those on this call, on one end of this curve that, that understand it that will do anything they can to improve the health of the soil. And there's quite a few on the other end of the curve that have no idea what's going on. You know, soil in their mind is dirt. It's something they walk on. They don't want it in the house. They don't want it on their shoes. And for God's sakes, we can't have it on our car. We got to wash it off of our car. There's a few in the middle. I mean, a lot of people in the middle. Yeah, we know what soils are and we hear people talk about it, but you know, it's no big deal. If you or we in this movement can move the vast number of people that are in the middle of this curve towards the end of caring, understanding, and wanting to do something, you will be a tremendous success. Let us save the source, save the soil, let us make it happen. Absolutely. <laughs>